Luciano Solverall took his first Ilona Polo driving for Alan Hodges and Carl Walter in car number three. Adrian Devereaux starts on the outside of the front row, making it a Hodges Walter sweep here in Wales. Now, the major news item is, uh, well, it's not really uh, a surprise here is that the MCMA has reiterated its request to have provisional places for the next major event in the Master Cup Series, that being the round of Indianapolis. They've requested uh, 15, I believe, provisional positions for that race uh, for manufacturer cars, and they've given uh, the TM Master Cup Series officials a couple of weeks in order to make a decision on that. So it looks like things are going to be handled a little differently than they were at Kayala. And if that request is denied, uh, we believe the MCMA will actually boycott the round of Michigan, which... Uh, that could be a bit of a travesty, wouldn't it? Uh, just, we had a very similar fiasco uh, to this in the uh, round of Texas a few years ago, but that was um, more of a question whether or not the rules were being applied fairly to everybody, which uh, I still maintain they weren't. Allrhein Dewissant, or the Launch Motor Park as it's been renamed, has a very, very abrasive circuit, and therefore the tires that were brought to this track were very conservative and uh, there's not a whole lot of grip and they last maybe a bit too long so there's uh, a question whether or not the tires are going to be uh, optimal and in practice that didn't really look like it was the case there were some people that were claiming that this race could be a bit of a disaster uh, and other people were saying otherwise however we're about to find out Dan off to you thank you Lance fire in the hole on the start Kurt Pliskin has a uh, fire into the hood of the 16 car and that takes him out on the pace lap so car number 16 doesn't even get to take the start here at the round of Wales. Uh, it's been a bit of a disaster of a season for Kurt Pliskin and uh, well fire in that car is uh, well might be merciful because he's really struggled this weekend and uh, well it's not been a good season for PSI in general. He's put in a several good drives but just uh, hasn't really gone too well for Pliskin. It's unfortunate he's out already. Here's the start of the race and they're fanning out quickly. Devereaux is already through. Gotten around several Sykes. He made a big Bid for the lead and the bid for second in the first corner didn't really pay off. He dropped back a little bit. Uh, there's contact in the back, but Luciano Savarol appears to be content to set behind Adrian Devereaux, who got a rocket start. Now here's Christian Hans on the 64. A little contact with Davina Henson. He slides out wide on the curb into the back of the Sova. Both cars off the track. Well, Christian Hans has dropped out of, uh, well, more than half the races held so far this year. And uh, he's already gotten into the Sova. Uh, being, I'd say, maybe a bit over-ambitious there. Uh, well, trying to get around Henton. Or maybe in contact between Johans and Henton. There's Roswell is slow in the uh, 22 car. But, uh, anyway, Lewis Kingston, the 17 car, also had some contact. That was with Avery Holtzman, another pretty ambitious move. This is Holtzman's last run in that 19 car, and, uh, considering how many incidents he's been in, when he's been in that 19 car, I think there's going to be some people that are going to be happy to see Holtzman, uh, not in that car. Here's Kevin Dwyer and Scott Stoiler running side by side down the main straight. As uh, there comes Marcus Leonard, who's up way back in 33rd place. There's Nasova behind uh, Kevin Dwyer. Dwyer off the course. He defends his spot, but Craig Mummert runs into the back of Dwyer, and Dwyer is out of the race very early on. Very unfortunately for Kevin Dwyer, doesn't even get a chance to show what he had, and he thought he had a great car here this week as Adrian Devereaux in car number one is in the lead of the race at the end of lap three. Where have we seen this before? I mean, this is not exactly a novel concept. Adrian Devereaux in the lead early on. Uh, he's led more laps, I think, than just about everyone else put together, seemingly. But uh, he hasn't really won a race since Carbondale earlier in the year. Um, so I think uh, with that streak going, I think it's only a matter of time before something goes wrong on uh, Adrian Devereaux's car, so I don't think the field has too much to worry about. All joking aside, uh, Devereaux has been very quick this weekend, and he looks like he could actually seal the deal this week. Danny Sovin is running in ninth place. Uh, now, his team was not terribly happy about him after he crashed in the end of the first lap at the Carriola Grand Prix, but uh, Danny Sovin's doing his best to redeem himself, and I'd say he's certainly doing that. Sovin is a former winner of the Carriola Grand Prix, having won that race twice, back-to-back -back in 03 and 04. Here is Avery Holtzman, and, uh, well, he's already messed with the Avenger, and the Avenger is now going to mess with him. Oh, Kingston gets the back end a little out of shape, but I think message sent. Kingston, none too happy with Avery Holtzman's rather ambitious dive on the first corner, and, uh, well, uh, he has his own way of getting his feelings across. Peter Short, we believe, will be in this 19 car uh, for some of the races when we get back to the States. 
Ben Atkins is running in 16th place. He is the 17th of 17 Independent Trophy cars to ever run this year, running in 16th place in this race. He ran to Cater last year, which was his debut, and he finished 5th in another car fielded by the Eichholz Autosport uh, team. Uh, his sponsor, Ricky and Lewis, has a lot of uh, guests to see this team perform here this weekend, and so far, uh, Ben Atkins is delivering. He's running very, very well and has been on the pace uh, all weekend. In the first two laps, Marcus Leonard has passed nine cars up to 24th place. Now, the sponsor on the Marcus Leonard's car has been in a lot of legal trouble, and uh, I don't think we'll see the Umbrella Corporation on this car too much longer. Uh, this is probably the last time we'll see this livery on this car, and uh, which will leave Leonard without a sponsor as he battles here with Charlie Waters. But uh, Marcus Leonard's been pretty good at finding a sponsor, and uh, he usually finds some of the most interesting sponsors um, that we've ever seen on Master Cup Series cars. Uh, pretty, go uh, pretty colorful individual as well, Marcus Leonard. Uh, he's had a couple of uh, very amusing sponsors, to say the least, over the past couple of years, and uh, we believe he'll be bringing some of those back on board. And we uh, continue watching this battle, this thrilling battle for 23rd place between Marcus Leonard and uh, Charlie Waters, and it looks like Leonard's finally cleared the 30 car. And uh, Charlie Waters putting up a very clean fight against Leonard there. It's a very, uh, very good, clean battle, which we haven't really seen from Charlie Waters much of this year. Here's Lewis Kingston uh, kind of toddling around the track. Uh, he's being a pretty respectful backmarker for the most part, but uh, his, uh, his teammate Tom Delgado is going to be right in line behind this group of cars. There's the 37 car. Now we're going to wait and see how Lewis Kingston handles things. Goes through the, chic the chicane all right. There he, there he goes. He lets still got him by... Oh, now he's holding up Arto Kekkonen. Oh, isn't that a great teammate? I mean, Tom Delgado better be really happy he's got a teammate like that that'll actively jam up traffic for him. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, we've seen uh, quite a bit of team orders in the past, it seems. Scott Stoiler in particular, and uh, Japan is what I'm thinking of. Leonard Roderick in car number four is uh, going to be... His contract actually ends at the end of this season. There's a lot of rumors that have linked him to Power Steering Incorporated, and Roderick is actually set to visit their shop during uh, the Indianapolis week. But uh, I'm not so sure he'd be willing to walk into what is essentially Kurt Pliskin's team. Uh, Marcus Leonard uh, appeared to uh, struggle in that team, but also Roderick could be taking this car, Packer Carroll's Ride. There are some reports that Volpe isn't too impressed with uh, the 30-year-old. He's one of the older rookies, and... Uh, Volpe really puts a lot of stress at the Cariola Grand Prix, or puts a lot of stress in that race, and Packer Carroll didn't really cover himself with too much glory there, so uh, I wouldn't entirely be surprised if Roderick ended up replacing Packer Carroll at uh, Volpe as well. But also, uh, Volpe apparently has been too impressed with his uh, Packers teammate Davina Henton in, the, uh, in car number six, and uh, uh, Henton goes out on lap seven, as we see right here, She's been in contention for a few wins, but uh, she has, hasn't sealed the deal yet. But uh, Henton's sponsor, Lynx, might be leaving Volpe to start its own team, and uh, therefore Henton could leave the open vacancy. Uh, however, with Chris Davenport possibly taking over this ride, uh, we're not really sure what's going on at Volpe next year. Marcus Leonard update. He's up to 20th place. Talk about burn from the stern. Leonard is flying. He is the, the only car quicker than him is the race leader. Marcus Leonard really uh, rocketing towards the front. Great battle here for 21st place between Charlie Waters and Morgan Hamburg. Uh, Waters has been pretty clean lately. He hasn't really been causing some of the incidents he was um, characterized by early on in the season. This 30 car driving for James Dalton. He's uh, not really made too many friends in his Master Cup career, but it looks like he's uh, making a good effort to turn that around today. Uh, good on him there. Morgan Hamburg side by side down the front straightaway. Charlie Waters. Oh, no! Right as I was... Oh, Charlie! Morgan Hamburg had the spot, and Charlie Waters just hooks the 67 car and spins him out. I'm not really sure what that was all about. Well, that's commentator's curse if I didn't... Yeah. Morgan Hamburg, he had the spot, but he just moved over, I think, on Waters, and... Well, Waters wasn't exactly willing to give the spot, even though I think uh, Hamburg very clearly had it. Um, time penalty to Waters. I have to admit that that's getting, that, that seeing that graphic come up, all, seemingly every other race is getting a bit old. Yes, you can clearly see, I think. Morgan Hamburg had the position, but uh, at least this time he didn't hit anything, which, uh, well, anyway. Back with Yamino Tenchi, running in sixth place. She was on the podium at Brands Hatch, but uh, 
I don't think the pace of the Juno is going to allow that today unless some of the cars in front of her drop out for mechanical problems. Tenchi's been very smooth and very solid this season, but uh, just needs to kind of pick up the pace, I think, a little bit. Blake Kamphausen is running in 13th place. He's struggled a little bit. Uh, the Team Star USA having a lot of adversity this season, having to deal with this uh, uh, relatively difficult car. The new rules caught them off guard, and they're just really struggling. They've got a, a great group of guys behind them, and uh, we hope to see them do well again here. Back up with Adrian Devereaux, who's now encountered Lewis Kingston again in the 17. Uh, Adrian Devereaux, not the biggest fan of some of the back markers, but Kingston uh, continues to be a very, very courteous driver out there, which uh, uh, characterizes him uh, for the most part, unless uh, you're Avery Holtzman and you run into him in the first corner. Leonard Roderick hits the pit line on lap 16, which is half distance. Should be uh, should be good uh, the finish on fuel. Due to these pretty slow lap times they're doing around here. Hometown hero, Michael Sykes. We haven't really talked about him too much. He's been running in fifth pretty much ever since the start of the race. He also pits on lap 16. Danny Sovin in the 81 is on his way in. Scott Bates. You see also Packer Carroll and uh, Yamino Tenshi. So, yes, I see. Uh, there is also Matthias Taub is in the pits. There's Danny Sovin in the 81 car. And right behind him, Scott Bates in the 88. The Hodges-Walter pair. They run up until lap 17. Uh, however, two other cars make it to lap 17. Ian Cooper, who has basically no rear end after that first turn mayhem. Marcus Leonard as well. So Marcus Leonard's been stretching his fuel. Great run, by the way, by Marcus Leonard. We haven't really seen some uh, guys do run this well from all the way in the back. Packer Carroll has actually gotten around Leonard Roderick in the pits. So Packer Carroll in car number two, the Volpe crew has actually made up ground for a change. We haven't normally been able to say that, but... Uh, uh, the Volpe crew is not exactly known for its speed, and uh, there's a Ryan Matthews, appears to be the last car to pit. Looks like he made it to lap 18. Scott Stoiler felt something was wrong uh, with his car after he left the pit stop, and uh, he, he was 100% correct. He went out of the race from 21st place on lap 18. So, uh, hadn't been a great weekend for Stoiler. He was sent to the back after that uh, collision with Charlie Waters. Uh, anyway... We're on lap 20. Both EFR cars you see in the top 10. Marcus Leonard up to 12th place. Ben Atkins in the Atlantic Motorsports car to 13th. Arto Kekkonen, haven't talked about him all day. The Gessler in Kekkonen's hands anyway has been struggling this week. In 19th, Chris Johans uh, still sitting in 20th place. Uh, didn't get a time penalty for that incident earlier. So uh, Chris Johans in uh, car number 64 just hanging on to a single point. But Adrian Devereaux, car number 1 continuing to uh, have control of this race. Now, it looked like this was going to happen in Russia, but, uh, oh, wait a minute, we got uh, Packer Carroll. Uh, he's pretty uneasy around some of these back markers. He's way all over the place. Roderick pounces! Roderick goes around the outside of Packer Carroll coming into the hairpin. Tudor gets a move around Packer Carroll on the outside, makes it stick. Packer Carroll just a little uneasy around uh, Zach Duff, but, and Roderick takes full advantage, jumps around the outside of Packer Carroll, and moves into third place. So Roderick back to third. In car number four, Roderick, the winner of this year's Carnella GP. And here is uh, Ben Atkins. Now, if he keeps this run up, he, uh, for his remaining Independence Trophy races, he can be a sleeper to take the Independence Trophy. I'd say Ben Atkins uh, clearly sending a message that he is a threat. Here's Marcus Leonard in car triple nine, running in 12th place. That is, I believe, Zelda Ashby directly in front of him. Former teammates when they were both driving for PSI. Speaking of Power Swing Incorporated, there's been some reports that Leonard could be headed back there because he's uh, reportedly none too happy with uh, the Xenos team. And I don't entirely blame him. The two team EFR cars, Ian Cooper in the 777 and Scott Bates in the 88, are both having fantastic runs. Ian Cooper, despite having, uh, well, the rear end completely gone, uh, he's just hanging on, I can, I can bet, uh, because, uh, well, you don't really want a car that slides around a whole lot at this racetrack. Here is the 88 car of Scott Bates. He's been having a very strong run as well. Now, he didn't really cover himself with too much glory in the round of Russia, but he's clearly uh, amending that. Lap 24, running here with Packer Carroll in fourth place. Now, if you're going to save your drive, this is the kind of run you need. Oh, no. What you don't need is mechanical difficulties like this to take you out of the race. So, Packer Carroll out on lap 24. Here's Arto Kekkonen in the uh, 9 car in 19th place. Now, uh... While we're talking about the silly season, Arto Kekkonen is one of the only drivers that we know for certain will be back in that car next season, barring uh, something very strange, uh, because uh, he has a multi-year deal, and that's kind of a rarity, unfortunately, these days. Danny Sovin and Matthias Taub are currently in a heated battle for sixth place. Danny Sovin in car number 81, 
Uh, continues to have an awesome run with this team. Uh, looks like they've made up quite a bit of ground in the pit stops, and they've gotten him uh, in contention to fight for some uh, fight for a top five possibly. Here is uh, Zelda Ashby in the 55. Is going to use Zach Duff as a pick. It looks like she's going to try to get around Scott Bates in the 88. And looks like she's going to do it. Marcus Leonard tries to follow suit, but Bates gets a better run off the corner than Leonard does. So Bates is going to get her back around the triple nine car. And Zach Duff in that five car is not really off the pace, uh, but uh, he's clearly kind of held, was kind of held up just a little bit, held up with the 88 just a little bit, but that's just part of racing. Here's Yamino Tenchi in the 25 car. Basil Lewis Kingston. Tenchi's in trouble. Tenchi's off from fourth place. Oh, that's got to be gut wrenching. Tenchi had such a good run going. We're on board with Michael Sykes as we watch uh, everything happen in front of him. Now, Kingston just loses the rear end, and I don't think Kingston even knew that um, the Tenchi was there. And, uh, oh, that's not going to sit too well with Owen DeGarmo's team, especially since Lewis Kingston drove for them uh, in the past. Now, Michael Sykes is probably a little lucky he didn't get collected in that mess. And Tenchi just lost it a little bit after uh, Kingston came back over. However, I don't think the stewards were terribly happy. Charlie Waters in car number 30 is running back in uh, 20 and 21st place, I believe. And mechanical difficulties will take him out with just a couple of laps to go in the race. Charlie Waters uh, didn't exactly cover himself with glory today. Final lap, and we're looking uh, at Melanie Cleveno in car number 12. This is her last scheduled run in this car. And you'll notice she's going to make a move around Blake Kamphausen, who is, again, a little skittish around another one of these drivers who's just a bit skittish around lap cars. Cleveno took full advantage and around the outside of the hairpin. Basically a carbon copy of what Leonid Roderick was able to do. Uh, but Cleveno may be a little bit braver because uh, Cleveno was not even alongside Camp Housen before they got into the break zone. Fantastic move around the outside by Melanie Cleveno to take over uh, 12th place. There, here she goes around the outside of Blake Camp Housen. However, back up at the pointy end of the field, Adrian Devereaux finally has a race where nothing goes wrong. And Adrian Devereaux takes his third win of the year when, uh, well, as he said it in the post race interview, this should have happened a long time ago. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, makes good on some of his early uh, season pace and brings home win number three of the 2012 campaign. It's been since 2006 that a driver has won more than uh, three races in a season. Devereaux has won three and we're not even halfway through the season yet. I'd say that's a very, very ominous sign. Luciano Savaral followed him home in second. Roderick t uh, completed the podium. However, Roderick was catching Savaral towards the end of the race. And had this race been another five, six laps longer, I think we could have had a very exciting battle for second unfold. Michael Sykes brings home a good fourth place. That's where he qualified. I'm pretty sure he'll be happy about that. Danny Savin brings home a top five for that team. Very underfunded operation. Danny Savin, though, with a lot of determination, held off Matthias Taub and uh, made his car very, very wide, which didn't exactly make Taub too happy. Ian Cooper came home 7th, Ashby 8th, Scott Bates a solid 9th, Marcus Leonard from 33rd to 10th. Ben Atkins a very good run in uh, car number 56. Melanie Cleveno, two restarts and two finishes in the points. And, uh, well, I'd be very surprised if uh, someone's not asking Melanie Cleveno to drive for them uh, this season because she is doing a very, very good job in the few races she's run. Blake Camphausen, Tom Delgado, solid runs. Avery Holtzman winds up uh, 15th, although I don't think too many people are terribly happy with him. There are some people that wanted a time penalty assessed to Holtzman for that first uh, corner collision. Lewis Kingston, I'm looking at you. Anthony Griffith, Arto Kakinen, Ryan Matthews, and of course Dan McKay in the 50 car. Actually gets a couple of points in that 50 car. Yulian Asova takes home 20th place after she was involved in uh, a bit of a collision with Chris Johans in the first corner. Uh, Jose Luis Martinez also took home 21st place, so the two Katza drivers were actually very, very close towards the end of the race. And let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship leaving Wales as we leave the European Tour to head back to the United States. And Adrian Devereaux has taken the championship lead back from Arto Kekkonen in the 9. However, Kekkonen is still very much a threat for the championship. Also of note, Zelda Ashby and Scott Bates jumped up four positions each. Matthias Taub jumped up three. And uh, Henton, Nasova, and Lewis Kingston, the big losers this weekend. Keep an eye on that name in 14th place. Mika Pasanen. I have a feeling there's going to be a couple teams that are very eager for his services for the rest of the season. I'm thinking of some teams like Black Diamond Racing, Scuderia Tutino, 
uh, Majestic Motorsports at this rate that don't really have a regular driver or even some teams that might be looking to replace one of their regular drivers. I think we'll be seeing more of Mika Pasanen and possibly Antiro Vertanen as well this season. Speaking of people we'll see more this season, Danny Sauvin and Ben Atkins had very strong runs and let's have a look at the Independence Trophy to see where they stack up. Danny Sauvin in the 81 car is obviously looking very strong. With that many independent points in uh, just, two, just two independent races, I'd say he's looking at that Independence Trophy with both eyes. I have to say that Ben Atkins could be a sleeper as well. Now, if the MCMA teams boycott the round of Michigan, some teams could be handed a huge advantage entering the round of Michigan, so we really have no idea how that race could play out. And if either Cameron Taylor, Tom Moore, Brandon LaRoe, or Dan Lecklider end up taking home the Independence Trophy, I'll imagine there are going to be some people who are none too happy about it.